Today we're talking about the amazing experience I had at the 2019 Minnesota Long Range 22 Room Fire Match. Shooting precision rifle is something that I've wanted to get into for a long time and thankfully this year I was able to shoot my first precision centerfire match which was absolutely an amazing time. I have a video about that experience up there if you're watching this on YouTube otherwise if you're watching it on other platforms go ahead and do a search. And then I got to do another experience in the precision match realm however a precision rim fire match which was absolutely an amazing time. Thank you guys very much for spending a few minutes checking out this video. My name is Dave Tim from Guns and Tactics. I encourage you to check out our webpage online, learn more about us. And if you like the video, don't be afraid to like, share, and subscribe. And also make sure you post comments on what you think of the video. Before I get into the review, I do have to give a couple of shout outs. Number one to Brian Autry, the creator, developer, and just kind of mastermind extraordinaire. And when I was talking to him at the match, he said that he wanted to have basically like a world-class precision rimfire event. So he kind of made it and he uh, made this match, the long range 22 rimfire match. And then we also did in the second half, a king of 0.28 miles challenge, which at first I didn't know exactly what that meant, but then it literally means 0.28 miles, which is uh, like 465 yards. We we're trying to set the record. So more on that here in a little bit. Additionally, some of the footage that you will see in this video is from Michael David Olson. Super good guy. I got to meet him at the match. He is a great precision rifle shooter in his own right, center fire and rim fire. And the guy is a really, really talented videographer, media creator, photographer. Some of his footage is absolutely stunning. And some of his other topics that he covers too, uh, even his simple farm videos, you know, he's doing this amazing hobby drone footage of just some harvesting that just is absolutely gorgeous. So super talented guy, super great guy, and he helped me with some of the footage for this video as well. So thank you to him. So I was lucky enough to have the opportunity to use this Voodoo V22 amazing precision rimfire rig, which I will have a full review coming probably early winter, late fall. I wanna do a few more tests with it, but spoiler alert, this thing shoots lights out. And once I had the gun to review, I had the scope to review from Trigicon, this is the AccuPower four and a half to 30 front focal plane, which actually is a really, really good fit for a rimfire rig because the parallax goes down to about 20 yards and it has a lot of travel, which was uh, something that we I definitely need in the rimfire world. But then when the opportunity to do this match came up, it was just, it was a no brainer. It seemed like a perfect fit to evaluate the equipment as well as my shooting ability, plus just to have a lot of fun. So the stages, I never thought it would be possible to shoot out to three, 400 yards with a 22. I just never fathomed that. Whenever I shot 22s before, the furthest shot I ever took was a hundred yards. Most of my 22s were zeroed at 25 because it was mostly 25 and 50 yard shooting. And now with this match, you know, we were shooting a lot. So the first stage, uh, just to get into it, we were, you know, it's like precision rifle. Uh, you're shooting off of props or different equipment or stages, and you can use a bag, you could use a bipod, you could use a, a pillow, things like that. But the stages were challenging. And the uh, first stage that I shot was the tree stage, where we had targets at 159 at 250 yards, which, just to give you some context, for a 22, I needed 4.7 and 9.7 mils of correction. So being able to dial those and, and make my hits. Uh, second stage was the rat race, which was probably one of my favorite stages because you're shooting these little three by seven squirrel or rat sized targets out to 300 yards. They're at 100, 159, 207, and 300 yards. And being able to hit a little three by seven target at two and 300 yards was absolutely a rush. Just an absolute awesome, awesome experience. Some of the other challenges at the match included a spinner at 137 yards. I did not get it to spin over, but the people who did, uh, did a great job. They, you know, basically had to stay on it. Not only did you have to time your hits to get it to spin, but you also had to take into account the time of swinging and the rim fire getting to that 137 yards and kind of timing everything. And I couldn't do it. Now I felt pretty confident going in 
because I'm used to shooting spinners in three gun with a shotgun, rifle, handgun, but with the 22, it was a different experience. So it's something I definitely would love to practice. Some of the other stages included different barricades and barrels and props to shoot out to targets at 100, 169, and 214 yards. So again, we're shooting, you know, six inch piece of steel at 214 yards with an awkward position at a 22. It's just a great time. It's just, it's a good challenge and it really kind of forced you to get all of your fundamentals together. And you'd be surprised how much movement you know, you feel like you're steady and then all of a sudden that reticle just doesn't want to stop moving. So I, I really enjoyed the distance stuff. The last few stages kind of brought the distance in a little closer, uh, around 100 to 140 yards or so. And one stage was a paper stage where we shot a target, which I'll throw a picture of my target up on the screen here shortly. But it was basically you got two sighters and then you had 10 targets that were you're shooting for score. And I don't care what anybody says, shooting for score with the 22 is much harder than shooting for groups. But because I'm really confident in the equipment, I mean, I'm not a bad trigger puller, but I was super happy with my equipment. My first sighter was right on the money. My second sighter was a little out. And then I just took my time, make sure everything was solid, make sure my breathing was good, my natural point of aim, my trigger press. Uh, I was absolutely shocked when the scores came out for the paper stage that I actually tied for third overall, third out of 48 shooters. And again, this was my first rimfire match. So for me to get 67 points, uh, first place got 80, then 70, and then myself and another shooter were tied with, uh, for third with 67 points. You know, that was pretty impressive. That was a really, really cool experience. But like I said, I had the fundamentals down, but the reality is I think the equipment really helped carry me to get a good, you know, solid performance on that stage. There was then a one-shot stage. Basically, whoever could get closest to the center of a card. Um, mine was just outside of the bullseye, so unfortunately I didn't, didn't you know, come close to winning that. Another stage highlight for me was the Test Your Limits rack, which for those of you guys who don't know what that is, it was a rack at 100 yards, so 1.8 mils of correction, uh, you know, just to kind of give you an idea of ballistics. And it's a series of targets on this rack, and it starts from, you know, largest to smallest. So the largest tar target was two, two inches, Next one was 1.75, 1.5 inches, 1.25, 1 inch, 0 0.75, 0 0.5 inches, and the smallest was 0.25 inches. So yeah, quarter inch. Now the points progressed. So the largest target was worth less points. The smallest target was worth the most. And again, another highlight, I was able to tie for third on this stage with 80 points. So I made it all the way from the two inch, the 175, the 15, the 125, the one, the 0.75, and my 0.5 getting a total of 80 points. I, the one I could not hit was the .25. I think I came close. I might have hit the top of it at one point or something, but uh, I never got the, the true impact. But again, there was a bunch of us that did tie it for third. There was a couple people that got 100 points, so they were able to hit everything. And then uh, there was, like I said, a, a few of us with 80 points, uh, which I guess in a way you could look at it, it's kind of a tie for second because the first two shooters got 100. So uh, I guess that was a tie for second, which was again, a highlight for me being able to do that when the RO said, hey, nice job. And I was like, for real? And he's like, yeah, really good. So I never thought with a 22 prone, I'd be able to hit a half inch target at 100 yards. It was just, just it was so much fun. And again, it just, I'm, I'm, I really do want to give credit to the equipment. It was just so nice having good equipment to be able to deliver those rounds. So that was a lot of fun. And then the last stage that I shot for the first part of the match was on a rooftop where you're shooting a hostage rack and uh, it was a little harder than I thought and again you started out with biggest targets to smallest but then if you missed you had to start over and initially I started out pretty good and then I would of course hit the hostage and have to start over so my points uh, you know didn't do as well as I could but overall the match I finished kind of right in the middle I had a couple of really good stages and then I had some stages that weren't so good but it was a great great time. After lunch, we then switched to the King of Point Two Eight Mile Challenge, where basically we started at 200 yards, then we moved back to three, four, and ultimately 465. And at 200 yards, my group uh, literally once I, you know, my first shot, I had to adjust for wind, but then the rest of my rounds you could cover with a quarter at 200 yards. It was just awesome. And I'm shooting, you know, the Lapua Center X ammo. This stuff was recommended by Voodoo. I ran the Voodoo mags. Again, full review on all this stuff will be coming out later this year, but everything worked just as it should. And for me to look through the scope and see a 200 yard group that you could cover with a quarter was just awesome shooting. Move back to 300, 
300, my wind wasn't quite right. I was shooting a 12 by 12 inch piece of steel and I didn't really have a whole lot of call. Um, some of the other shooters had like sand. I had kind of more of a grass area, so it was difficult for me to see my hits. I did make one hit at 300, which allowed me to move back to the 400 and then at 400, I was not on steel. So I think my correction, maybe my elevation or windage was off, but I wasn't making hits. But we did have some shooters move back to 465 yards with voodoos and they're making hits at 465 yards. So it was just, it was so cool to experience. All in all, my only complaint with the match was that it's only a one day match. I would have gladly attended a two or three day match just shooting those stages. Even if we had to shoot those stages over and over again, just to kind of build your skills, I would happily do it. It was just a, a wonderful, wonderful fun time. And it's something I'm gonna do every year. I highly encourage you, if you guys are interested in precision rimfire, get out and shoot. You can shoot with anything. There was people shooting with uh, off the shelf bolt action guns. Uh, so there were some semi-auto 1022 type guns. And then obviously there's a lot of higher end precision bolt rifles as well, but you can be competitive with just about anything. I mean, one shooter did extremely well with, uh, she had a Tika, I think it's a T, T1X or T3X. I can't remember what the rimfire version of the Tika is called, but she's shooting with a, you know, off the shelf Tika rimfire bolt action gun and she did great. So those are great options. Savages were present, uh, the, you know, some CZ. So you can get relatively inexpensive rimfire rigs compared to, you know, to this to be competitive. And there's National Rifle League 22 stuff going on all over the country where you're shooting at indoor ranges, or, you know, with closer distances. So you don't have to worry about, you know, immediately figuring out your ballistics and dope for long range engagements. But it's cheap to get out and shoot. There's low recoil, there's low noise. It is something I can't wait to get my kids into. This was a really, really fun event and Brian did an absolutely amazing job throwing it on. Now, I'm a firm believer of not necessarily going to a match just for the prize table. However, one of the bonuses, whether it would, when I shot three gun, uh, some of the bigger events or even matches like this is a prize table. And I gotta say, without a doubt, this prize table blew me away. For a, a first rimfire match of this size, the amazing sponsors and supporters that Brian worked with. I mean, just to put it bluntly, Brian worked his butt off and basically reached out to everybody and received an overwhelming amount of feedback from those sponsors and companies to support the match. The prize table was amazing. And here's the cool part, it was a random draw. So everybody had a chance to do well at the prize table. There was uh, gift certificates for suppressors, half off suppressors. There was gift certificate toward a voodoo action, uh, discount of a voodoo action, a significant one. Ammo, high-end glass, spotting scopes, scopes, binoculars, ammunition, I think I already said that, uh, smaller parts, bags. I mean, there were so many sponsors. I don't even want to begin to name them because there were so many and I'm sure I will leave some out. So make sure you check out their Facebook page and I'll put a link here where you can see some of the sponsors and learn more about it. But the sponsorship support was absolutely overwhelming. I don't even know if they are all in here. I don't think so, but yeah, there's some, um, you know, the big names, Thunder Beast, Federal, MPA, Savage, We Bad, Voodoo, Alex Pro, Coltac, BPI. Um, I mean, there's just, and there's so many more too that sponsored it. So I was lucky enough to get drawn third uh, out of the random prize table. So I got a half off certificate from Thunder Beast that uh, I'll put to good use, I'm sure for some sort of awesome suppressor, but it was, it was an amazing, amazing prize table. So as a little side bonus, I went for the experience and have fun shooting. I could care less if I went last uh, on the prize table, but it was kind of cool that I got to go third, of course, but it was uh, an amazing, amazing prize table. So thank you to all of the sponsors and supporters of the match. I mean, seriously, the feedback at the prize table on the match was really, really positive. So a lot of amazing supporters. Thank you to the companies that support events like this. To learn more about the match, if you're in Minnesota particularly, I would make sure this is a match you'd go for. Now, I'm a little hesitant in recommending it because I know it'll fill up quick. Like literally, I was had an alarm set on my phone when registration opened up on practice score, you know, like making sure I could get in and get signed in because the match does fill, but it was an absolutely amazing time. They do have a Facebook page, uh, the King of .28 Miles or the Minnesota Long Range 22 Rimfire Match. You can find more information on Practice Score or their Facebook page as well. But Brian did an absolutely amazing job. If you're in Minnesota, I would highly recommend if you can get into the match, get into the match. It was a great time. So I hope you guys found this helpful. I had a blast. I'm going to be doing some more Precision 22 stuff in the future as well. Uh, full review on this will be coming and as well as kind of some of the practice things that I've been learning and picking up as a new precision rifle shooter as well. So I hope you found it helpful. If you do, please hit that like, share, and subscribe button. We want the channel to keep growing. 
And if you have a question, we do have a monthly QA series. At the end of the month, we answer your questions and give away a prize to one lucky winner as well. You can check us out online, gunsandtactics.com. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on social media. Thank you guys very much for watching. Have a great day. We work really hard to make content that we hope you as a shooter would enjoy. Subscribe to our channel, check out our featured videos and playlists, and if you have a question firearms related, go ahead and send an email to the address shown on the screen to be entered into our monthly QA series.